This is car porn, guys. There is the beating heart. Oh, there they go. There's an umbrella here with an Aston Martin logo. Uh, we've got a big ass diffuser right here. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this POV review by Autotop and L. My name is Max, and today I'm going to show you around the all new Aston Martin Vantage. So, it is a looker, this car. It looks freaking awesome and well, we've got a very beautiful spec today. So I'm going to show you around the car, show you all the features on it, uh, show you the looks. Then we'll take it for a drive along this road. Uh, we'll do a zero to 100 measurement and then we'll take it to the Autobahn for a quick Autobahn blast to see what it's like over there. So let's start. We've got a very, very nice color. It's a silver with sort of a bluish glow in there. Um, and it really works well with all the carbon fiber this car has. So it has a front bumper, which is mostly made of carbon fiber, uh, and it is very aggressive. It sort of sticks out, so you have that sort of splitter look. And it has a very big, newly shaped grille, but still has that, that recognizable Aston shape. Really cool. It looks really aggressive from the front. It looks like a, like a very, very angry, fighter jet uh, moving along we've got some gorgeous black wheels with some Aston Martin steel brakes we've got an air duct right here that directs air out of the arches the wheel arches and at the rear well this is just not suitable for work this is this is car porn guys this rear end I just absolutely love it I think it's one of the most I think it's one of the coolest looking rear ends I have ever seen. It is so aggressive. It is, there's a lot going on. There's a lot happening there, but it's still, uh, it looks like it was well thought out. And you have sort of that double wave shape, both on the trunk and in the rear lights and on the rear bumper and the diffuser. Uh, so again, we've got a lot of carbon fiber. Uh, we've got a big ass diffuser right here and we've got the sport exhaust as well. Uh, so that means that we get quad tailpipes instead of just two. These gorgeously shaped rear lights with that trunk spoiler that is just shaped like, like it's carved out of Italian marble or something like that. It's just, I don't know how to explain it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so it's a lot more aggressive than before. The V8 Vantage, the predecessor of this car, was absolutely gorgeous but it wasn't as aggressive as this so they definitely pulled apart the db11 and the vantage this is much more of an aggressive sports car the db11 is a true gt so i think the different models essen now has they are more apart than before they used to be sort of hard to distinguish driving wise so we've still got the doors that hinge up slightly and they are also hydraulic, I think, or at least there's some kind of brake in it because otherwise it would just fall too hard. So you can feel that there's a resistance, which is pretty smart. Okay, let's open up the bonnet, which is on the right side. There it is. There is the beating heart, the Aston Martin Vantage engine which is from AMG. It's the 4-liter V8 bi-turbo with 510 horsepower and it has 685 newton meters. Final inspection by Mr. Torren Hayden. So Aston Martin did sort of throw their own stuff at it um, and it also has a different exhaust to make it sound like an Aston. Uh, and it's also behind the front axle. But this is a marvelous engine. We know it very well. We've driven a lot of cars with it and well, I, I couldn't imagine a different engine in this Aston Martin. It just, it just works. And even though this is not a GT car, this is a sports car, don't forget it. It's a sports car. But nonetheless, it has quite a decent amount of boot space because you have this area right here and you have this area right here, which you can, you know, you can use to fit another duffel bag or a couple of cases. And there's also a little more space behind the seats 
And this is a very cool detail. There's an umbrella here with an Aston Martin logo. Made in England. Very nice, with a little leather strap here. I mean, they know how to make you feel special. Okay, on the interior, we've got very nice carpeting, which is actually quite deep. Um, we've got beautiful leather, which is really soft, very nice seats, and let's get in. The interior is actually really, really good. It's, it's much better than I was expecting, to be honest. Um, the finishing is great. It has beautiful materials, a lot of leather, some carbon fiber. Uh, I like the shape of this, even though there are a lot of buttons here. I actually prefer it because you can use it blindly. You don't have to look at it to sort of operate it. The infotainment system is also from Mercedes. So you have this same knob and you have the same system. It's not a great system because it's the old version. So it's a previous iteration of the Mercedes command system. Uh, but it is better than before. They used to have Volvo systems, which are terrible. So this is an improvement, I have to say. We've also got some digital displays over there, uh, which are really nice, actually. You know, not the best quality, but uh, it looks cool and it sort of shows you what you want to see. And it also changes with the driving modes, but I'll show you that in a minute. And it is a real two-seater sports car, so no useless bench right there with two little seats that no one fits in it's just more luggage storage which is great it's just what you want in a sports car okay we'll start it up it actually sounds really aggressive already uh, we are in track mode so i'm going to switch to sport mode there are three driving modes in this car. Sport is the first one. So there's no normal, there's no comfort. It's just sport. You're driving a sports car, you're in sports mode. Uh, if I click it once, the exhaust valves open and it goes to sport plus mode. The dial also changes. Hit it again, dial goes red and we're in track mode. So that means that everything sharpens up, the exhaust is open, everything is at its most aggressive setting. We have another button right here for the Skyhook adaptive dampers. So we have Sport, Sport Plus and Track for that one as well, uh, which is really good. So I will rev it once in Sport mode with the exhaust valves closed. So you hear that V8 rumbling. Really nice, beautiful sound, a real V8 sound, I like it. Um, but if we switch to track mode, the valves open and this happens. That is seriously loud. Oh man. Jesus Christ, that is seriously loud. And you do hear the difference between this, I'll get my mic out there and a C63 AMG, this is much louder. All right, enough with all that talking. We'll take it for a drive and see what it's like. So we've got our gears right here. We're going to select drive and that should be it. Alrighty, here we go. We are in track mode, so that means that the exhaust valves are open, as you can hear. We've got our pedals on the steering column, which I really like. I prefer it to the pedals on the steering wheel. Oh, we've got a ZF 8-speed gearbox, which is seriously quick. It is very, very good, this gearbox. It is not as quick as a dual clutch, of course but it is very, very quick, quick enough. Okay, so we've got a little tunnel right here. Oh, that's loud. That is very, very, very loud. So turn in very light. They have used a very quick steering rack on this car to make it sort of feel very nimble and agile. 
and they have succeeded because this front end feels very very light this car weighs around 1600 kilos curb weight um, so that's not super light but it does feel very light which is really nice of course okay so we'll get the phone mount right here get my phone out draggy GPS all right so to use launch control we have to completely disengage traction control that means holding this button down for five seconds which means it goes into track mode there it is and then holding it down for another five seconds which turns it off completely so now if we are in track mode and we are going to select track mode for the suspension as well this should give us the fastest launch it should be able to do 3.6 seconds to 100 so we will see if that is true and we are going to do so right around here okay stop foot on the brake full throttle it will go to around 2000 rpm some trouble with traction there that's 4.1 yeah i didn't think that was too quick uh, it's a bit weird this launch control because it only revs up to 2000 rpm and then it sort of dies a little bit it's like oh, it has to get from down low and it doesn't feel that quick so i also think that because this car is 685 newton meters that they sort of had to otherwise you would just smoke up your tires launch control there we go yes more traction 3.85 so i'm not able to get anything quicker than 3.8 at this stage so i think that if you have perfect conditions maybe you know hot tires hot tarmac you would be able to do a 3.6 but it's difficult. All right, let's hit this tunnel again. Why not? Oh man, it's loud. So this car is on the aluminium platform from the Aston DB11. Uh, they have just shortened it and it is 30% stiffer than the DB11, which is pretty insane. And they did really try to make this car feel very aggressive and on edge. As I said, it has those Skyhook adaptive dampers. So we are going to turn those back to sport mode for the Autobahn. We're going to hold this pedal. goes back to automatic mode for the Autobahn as well. Oh, listen to that exhaust barking away. It's so crazy. So this car does feel a lot more modern than previous Astons. They have really taken a big step into the present or the future, however you want to look at it. Uh, especially this is a lot better than before, but just the controls, how everything feels, it just feels more modern and it, it feels more like it can compete with its rivals now. You know, you, it used to be like, someone bought an Aston and you would say yeah of course because it looks insane it sounds insane but you would sort of take all the drawbacks for granted because it is an Aston Martin because it has that that prestige that cool factor and because it looks insane and it sounds insane but now with this car it feels much more like a true competitor on all fronts I mean if I would have to compare this to an Audi R8 V10 a Porsche or anything else for that matter it just feels right up there okay full throttle oh I mean listen to that V8 Ooh. so how does it feel on the Autobahn well I'm going to switch to track mode for the suspension to see what the difference is of the damping full throttle little bumps yes it's very hard but it's not too bad actually uh, we're 
getting some more bumps ahead so I'm going to switch to sport again 270 oh braking hard oh man this car feels it feels really 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 good it feels very urgent everything feels very urgent the drivetrain uh, the gearbox is very quick the sound I mean that 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 insane soundtrack combined with the fact that this car feels so light on its feet and so agile it just creates this really really exciting experience I actually love this square steering wheel as well okay 